Warning, this podcast may not be suitable for listeners under the age of 17 due to graphic language, problematic statements, and the fact that we just don't give a fuck. We've been gone for a minute, and now we back with the jump off. Goons in the club. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Yo, you are so cool. Did you? How Wait. many How many times have you rapped in our intro, like coming into the intro? But no, we're, no. I was saving it. I was saving it. You were? I was. For real? Yeah, I was. I'm tight. I was in the car, like. I'm going to start off the, the yeah, podcast. Yeah, because I, like, I was listening to Kim, like, two weeks ago. So you've been saving it all that time? Mm-hmm. Yo. Sometimes you gotta brainstorm and be like, I'ma give it my all. And that's it. Yo, you corny as hell. I'm corny, but you jacked Izzo from Jay-Z and put your name in it. <laughs> Finish up with the intro. Um, hi guys. Uh episode 22. 22. Papa Jones. It's been a while. Yes. It's been a while. It's been a minute. Did you but miss it? Did I miss what? The, Podcasting. Um, um, I don't know. I did. I mean, we, we had like so much going on though. But I definitely missed it. I definitely got a lot of inquiries about it. You did? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. People reach out. Is it like sometimes you feel like it's kind of like a threat. So uh, I'm just saying like where y'all been. And you were like, mm, you live in South Carolina. <laughs> like... <laughs> I didn't know we were cool. Like, I didn't know we were like homie homies. We been around. Yeah, we been around. Working, getting shit done, trying to get shit done. Setting up a lot of shit, you know, working on our businesses. You turn 42. I turn 32. <laughs> <laughs> Last Monday, April 15th, I turned 32. That was fun. That was a lot That of was, fun. that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been out like that in a minute. I know the one thing you were saying before we went out is you were just like, oh, um, the place we're going to, you sure you want to wear that? And I'm like, no, that is the whole point that I stand the fuck out. Wait, so, so earlier in that day, you were, you were, you you were dressed like a complete, like, oh yeah, I was half naked. Like a a smut. Yeah. Okay. No. So (laughs) don't try and play me. (laughs) And then later today you went into church. uh, So wait a minute. So let me ask you this. Where are lingerie is being dressed like a smut? No, I'm just saying like the transformation, like usually you start off. You start off like conservative during the day, then you get risky at night. And it was the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. But work is work. Work is work. I mean. So do you want to tell everyone why you were dressed like so provocative. Oh, I was waiting for you to say a smut, but okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, I announced, I'm not sure if it was the last episode or the episode before that, um, I have a business partner and we now are co-owners of a lingerie, etc. online boutique. It is called Black Lace and Leather and it is mainly geared towards plus size women. Um, BBW. I'm not going to say BBW. Well, they say bigger, better, wetter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. In that case, yeah. Um, only, like, I came up with the idea because I started noticing that um, I have three nightgowns that I wear around my apartment. I live alone. Don't have no kids. Just me, the cat, and the fish. And for some reason or another, when I put these nightgowns on, like, I feel really sexy. You know, I'm not 100% comfortable with my body. But, you know, like, they're tight, they're comfortable, they're very short. And, you know, I, I put on my little, um, I guess, like, my little, like, uh, kimono duster. Because I walk around the apartment in that as well. And, like, I just feel good. So you feel fancy? It's not fancy. With, it's walking just like around a, with your, um, what they, what they say? You spend all, uh, all your time drinking wine in your living room, all that good can't find no one to give it to. Hey, it's oh, a, yeah. It's a, it's a shame. <laughs> yeah, I do. I feel really, really good in it. But then when I started talking to my friends, I started noticing that a lot of them either have not bought lingerie in a really, really long time or they've never bought it at all. And this is women in their late 20s and their early 30s and their mid 30s. And I'm like, wait, what? I never, I never bought it. Mm-hmm. Yo, you want me to tell you some crazy stuff? So, um, my best friend, like, she's into all that shit, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, years ago, I think I was, like, 
in my early 20s. Of course, I wasn't thinking about that stuff. Mm-hmm. And she was like, yo, Cole, you got to get this and that, get all sexy and this and that. I was just like, look, like, I'm not even worried about that. Mm-hmm. So she bought me, like, two little outfits for um, for uh, Christmas or my birthday, some, something like that. Don't you know those joints had the tags on it from Victoria's Secret? T- tags on it until I got rid of them. Oh, my God. I was like, yo, why are you, why are you buying me this I mean, shit? it's... Different strings for different folks. Yeah, like, that's her thing. But that's not my thing. I'm like, yo, get me a plush robe. Like, (laughs) (laughs) like, that's me. (laughs) Right. No, my friends, like, when I talked to them, like, they were saying how they wanted to, but they really didn't feel secure enough to. Mm -hmm. And like I said, like, I'm not 100% secure with my body, but, like, I actually like that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I like to put the makeup on and the lipstick and, you know, the lingerie and... You know, I think it's cute. I think it's sexy and it makes me happy. So um, I went to my business partner and I pitched the idea to her and she fell in love with it. And um, I think one of the things she said was that um, she definitely understood where I was coming from in that um, with the whole uh, plus size thing going into stores, the regular section would be all this dope shit. The plus size section would be ass. Yo, I re- Going into that store, um, Mad Rat, mm-hmm. you're absolutely correct. Like, you you go to one side, like, mm-hmm. cute stuff. Right. But then you go to the plus side, it's like all this, like, fluffy shit. Weird and, like, shit. Fucking, yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. Sometimes you can find good stuff on the plus side, but then other times you can't. It's like you, you and, it's like uh, hit or miss. Right. And you may find one or two pieces. Right, right. And then for me, it was just like... A lot of these lingerie companies, and I'm not going to name any, they're made for skinny women, and they include larger sizes. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, fuck that. No, like, I'm going to get my shit together. Um, I specialize in the lace side. She specialized more on the leather side, which is more of the BDSM and actual leather and, you know, whips and chains and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, spank me, you know. We all like to be. Gray. I was going to say choke, but we all like to be choked a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but she, yeah. So she was, she was just like a lot of people don't think that larger women are into that type of stuff, and a lot of us are. And it's just so. finding the the right piece that you know complements your body. Yeah, that has a lot to do with it as well. So one thing that I want to do is not limit anything. Uh-huh. I just, I definitely didn't want to limit anything. I wanted to, you know, um, be able to just cover all bases, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. and go from there. So, what do you think? You were there with me at the shoot. Yeah. And, um, you know, being as though you have your own clothing company and plus the other jobs you had in the past in the background, you know, you were willing to lend a helping hand. So, I want to know what you think seeing everything because you got the first glimpse of everything you and the two different photographers that we used you actually like seen us in this stuff Mm -hmm. and you know before anybody else so what what did you think I think it was really dope I think it's a really cool uh, concept you know just encouraging you know uh, uh, I don't know what's the correct word to say larger BBW wait no people people don't like that term but, you know, some people do, some people don't. I just always say, you know, thicker women. Yeah, thicker women. Just encouraging thicker women to embrace mm-hmm. their their size and just, you know, just because even for slim women like me, like, you know, like I have different things that I'm not um, comfortable about. Like, I'm like, yo, I got like a, a gut. I have like back fat. Like, happened. yeah, to you, doesn't it doesn't exist. seem like it. But to me, I'm like, I know what I used to be. Mm-hmm. But it's just really cool just like seeing you like walk in your own and be confident about it. I know that you say that you don't feel confident, but it like, was so being, hard. Yeah, I'm, so but hard. being like behind the scenes and like looking like I wouldn't be able to tell that you were conf- confident in it mm-hmm. because it's to me like it looked like you were, mm-hmm. like you and um, Nikki. Nikki. Mm-hmm. Like, so like, I'm just like, like, yo, that's dope. Like, you know, you're comfortable enough to say, look, this is me. Like, you know, I embrace and like flaws and all because a lot of people can't do that, you know? Right. So right. it's just like, you know, like be happy, be confident. You right. know, we are all like these bomb ass females, like no it's matter scary. what shape or size. It's scary. Cause the one thing is that like, 
before I released those pictures, you know, I was um, really like thinking to myself, like I'm putting myself out there to be judged. Mm-hmm. And you can have a random person come to your page and be like, oh, look at this fat bitch, or she looks like a beach well, or whatever. And so, you know, I'm just Yeah, like, you are really putting yourself out there, like, mm-hmm. with no type of armor, just like... Whatsoever. Literally <laughs> no armor. Yeah. Like, half the shit I didn't have, like, you know, a bra on, you know, just out there with pasties. So, yeah, 100% put myself out there. That was the scariest part about it. The yep. feedback I got was, like decent though Mm -hmm. because a lot of women was like wow our community needs this and I can't wait to support will they actually support I have no idea because you know how that goes it's always your social media followers that support you more than the people that you will actually Actually call your friends right right and I noticed that a lot like I like having my own business like I develop like um relationships with a lot of my customers because I believe in that customer service you know having that natural rapport like like I write I hand write notes to each customer like mm-hmm. I really like I touch every single piece from beginning to end mm-hmm. like as far as like packaging and shipping and all that so it's just like you know it's different people like it's this one um customer like she's pretty much like family now but like we have the same like um family history similar mm-hmm. and she's always on the, uh, always all the way on the west coast but like we communicate like you know and it's, it's really cool like for you to develop new friendships and like see how many different people like really believe in you and that's what gives you that spark like even when like I was telling you like it's times where I go check my the numbers on my website and I get zero views right or for months I, I sell nothing right. and I still got to come out of pocket for and still push through for new samples for the upcoming uh, season, season or yeah. pay for yeah. photo shoots and yeah. pay for the website. And I'm experiencing and, that now. Yeah, so that's the that's the part like where you really gotta like push through and right. stay that like our slogan is fall seven times, stand up eight. Like and doing this for like 13 years, like there was a lot of times where I fell, but I kept on getting up and every time I got up, I got back got up stronger and innovated myself every single time so that's and that's the that's the number one thing you have to realize with a business because people are like oh that's so cool i like what you're doing i want to do that too they don't want to pay the prices it's a struggle like they don't want to pay the prices like yeah you see the pictures and you see the the bts like and Mm -hmm. it's like oh we having fun on the scene but you don't know that struggle to get to the photo shoot like Mm -hmm. you forgot your um Die highs. Oh yeah, and I was gonna <laughs> cry. Yeah, exactly. you was like, it's going to be okay. You just have to push through. And the photographer was just like, I don't think that it's going to be bad without them. And it turned out really good without them. And then like when I was helping you put your shoes on, I was like, oh, I noticed a part on her legs that she did like a patch of hair that she she Why did. Why would you mention that? <laughs> we didn't know. But you were no. like, I wasn't gonna tell you, but and I was like, yo, what the until fuck? after because yeah, I know how after. you get and like a lot of things. Yeah, show and I face. start, I start stressing out and I start feeling down. I'm one of those and people that's more so like, in my head. You were like, wait, I only have two outfits now because this isn't complete. I was like, calm down, relax. We're gonna play. Like, it was this four. Like, I was like, I, I prepare for four outfits. And then I was like, I only have three outfits. And I just remember um, after the photo shoot was done, did you come? Did you meet me at my house or something like that? And you're like, Which one? the first one. You was like, are these your thigh highs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yo. You was like, you make sure you pack them for the next photo shoot. Which is like, it's so dope because like, you're right. You see who stands behind you. And there's a photographer that wanted to work with me years ago, mm-hmm. right, like three years ago. And um, I reached out to her because she does we do our photography now. And I'm like, yo, like, this is so amazing. She was like, yeah, I remember you. Here's my website. Check out the prices. And it was like $500 for a photo shoot. And I was just like... Not in my budget right now. <laughs> not right now. And so when she actually seen what I was doing... And saw that you were serious. Right. And that I was very, very serious because she seen that I work with two different photographers. So not only did I do pay for one photo shoot, but I paid for two of them. And each photographer... Each session and photographer, they have a they different... They capture different. They have different... No, it's for specific reasons. So the first photographer where everybody sees me laid out on the bed, that's for the cover of the website. So, you know, it's not going to be too many pictures. The second one where I'm actually in a studio, 
that's for you know purchasing like they'll actually be purchasing those products in the description um but she came to me and she was just like i think it's amazing what you're doing and you know i want to support you mm-hmm. i'm going to give you a fully loaded free photography session and i was like bitch where <laughs> What? She was like, yeah, I just got a brand new studio and I'm really excited and, you know, I want to support you. And she was just like, when I have customers that, you know, they, they're larger women and, um, you know, they, they're looking they for want, that, she'll refer you. Right. She'll mm-hmm. refer them to me. So what I was thinking about doing was I was actually thinking about giving her some of the sample pieces because she uses, you know, the different stuff for her different clients. And that's what I mean. That's a social media friend mm-hmm. that, yeah, mm-hmm. like that would. And we'll be supporting each other. Yeah. And I, I, I just think that like, that's so amazing. And this is the first week that we actually unleashed anything. Um, I put out three pictures first and the first one said, be more confident, be more something. I forgot what it was. You guys can look on Instagram, but either way, they weren't just quotes that I'm linking to pictures. They were messages to myself. Mm-hmm. You know, like, stand up for what you believe in, hit the fucking ground running, and don't give up. Mm-hmm. You know, like, nobody's gonna believe in you and back you up the way you can. Now, don't get me wrong, I have a business partner, we back each other up fully, but I have to believe in myself first before I can believe in anybody yeah, else. Yeah, before you can convince anyone else. Right, and... exactly. And so, for me, it's just like, I'm actually putting the proof out there. And, like, a lot of people, they're just like wow and it's not just because you know i'm half naked but it's because i'm actually starting to lay the first bricks of my empire yeah you're actually putting in that work Mm -hmm. and um i think i told you there's a girl that i know of that has like this shanty shabby online boutique Mm -hmm. and the only thing she does i've actually showed you numerous girls that's been doing this they rip pictures from other people yeah, and that's that's no lazy. Effort. That's not putting in the muscle. Like it's it sounds like I should I should be home sewing right now or mm-hmm. later on tonight. But it's like you sometimes like and you'll you'll experience that. But you know you had your um you were selling jewelry. Mm-hmm. I was selling my jewelry. So business. it's it's those times where you feel like defeated. Yeah. And then you want to give up, and it's yeah. just like all right now what can I do to spark the creativity? And what I did was uh, my Smoke sister weed. and I, no <laughs> my sister and I went to New York for the day. Mm-hmm. Just walked around, took a bunch of pictures, talked to people, and we made a lot of dope like connections. Like somebody wants, like someone really dope wants to told us come back in September so we can discuss numbers, bring some samples so we can talk about like working together. Like and mm-hmm. then, so that right there is like a, the spark you need. Mm-hmm. Like because it could be the smallest thing, right? But it's. And you never know who knows who. Exactly. But it's just that those peaks and valleys when you're doing anything creative or trying to be an entrepreneur. But that's the way to go. Like, you got to build your own. You build up your community. You provide these jobs. Like, you, like, um, what's his name? The photographer. Mike. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? You hire these, these, you know, the people in your community that's trying, like, these, this artist, these creators, mm-hmm. and you get, you that's feed them. That's what his profile says. His Instagram profile says artistic creator. Yeah, like, so that's how you put that money back into the community, like Nipsey Hussle was doing. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And that, that yo, Rest the things. to the God, Nipsey Hussle. Jesus yeah, Christ. like, what, what he was doing for his community is dope. And the cool thing about it is, he didn't, he didn't put, when he was alive, he didn't put that out there like, yo, I'm doing this, like, look at yeah, me. Yeah, he was, he was behind the scenes with Exactly. Now, right. Because it was his, genuine. Yeah, exactly. It so was genuine. Now with his passing, of course, everything is coming to light, but that's, that was really dope, like. So, like, when you're on social media and you see people doing nice things for others, I hate looking in the comments and people say, well, why do you have to show this off? Why do you have to show this off? I don't always take it as people showing off. I take it as people being examples for their community. Mm -hmm. And I'm so quick to tell people, like, so, for example, um, the Chef Saud here in Philadelphia, that that country cooking lady. Oh, yeah. She does a lot for the community, absolutely. And then when she got locked up, everybody's like, oh, free her, free her, free her. And I'm like, I, I was put into the comments on the shade room. I was just like, you know, like, you guys are so worried about what she's doing or what she's not doing. She broke the law and that's the reason why she got locked up. 
But you guys are so quick to say, well, she gives out book bags and she gives out this and the third. She is one person and yes, she gathers other people around her, but what the fuck are y'all doing? Mm -hmm. What are you doing in your own community? And I tell people like, when I lived up in Albany, yo, no lie, for the three years that I was up there, I probably mentored about a good 100, 150 kids younger than me. Mm -hmm. And people don't think that it's possible, but like, Giving back to your community starts with you. Yeah, it makes you feel... But my mom always said, um, each one, teach one. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, like, when I was in high school, like, we had this thing called service learning. We had the... Um, you you pick somewhere where you volunteer your work. Like, my first year in high school, I went to my old elementary school, and I was a math and reading tutor. Like, and it... You feel like so... <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm proud of it, <laughs> but it does feel so good to be able to be like, yo, like I did this, like, mm-hmm. you know what yeah, I mean? Right, like, right. And especially for my community, like it's right. a lot of different things that I want to do for my old neighborhood once the funds are available. Like I would love to start a non a art nonprofit. <coughs> like, so, I think when I first met you, that's one of the first things that you told me Because that's what about. I was actively working on at the time. Mm-hmm. And then- Cause you, then you had like a vision board or something? Yeah. yeah I remember that. Yeah, like it's, it's just like, but imagine if, Everyone do just regular jokes. Everyone that's did that. what I'm you saying. Imagine how strong that's what like I'm our saying. community would be. I seen something online that it was just like you know, people are saying that they're gonna follow and Nipsey's footsteps and donate all this money, and it's more than money. But the real statement I seen was is that he was able to do that because he had it. Work in your means to help your community. It doesn't have to be monetary. It can Thank be you. time. Right. Thank you. And, you know, people people don't really understand that. Um, that man was doing everything from funding stem cell research. What else was he doing? He the, was the freaking lot. casino, like the, the strip mall. Okay, like. so the casino was completely different. Completely well, I'm, different. well, I'm just saying, but it, but you're investing in a casino, you're opening up job opportunities. That's what right. I'm just saying. Just no, like, it, I don't think it was a casino. I think it was an actual whole resort. Resort. That's what it was. It yeah. was something. It was a whole resort. He had so much under his belt, and like. Yo, even the freaking like when you put the phone over the logo, like that's yeah. like. Yeah, and that I was I, crazy. I know that a long time ago you was telling me that you had never been to LA, and I've been to LA several times, and I was just like, you know, that's somewhere that we have to go, and if we go, we have to go to Marathon. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he was ahead of his time for his memorial. Snoop was saying how like he kept wanting the something amusement from, park. Remember he right, was but the the realest thing he said was, you know, he wanted something that I didn't even want for myself. And because I didn't want it, he made it come to life. Mm-hmm. And it's like, damn, like that type of person with that type of initiative and drive and innovation, like the the world lost the real one. Yeah. Over some bullshit. But DL who you who like, because I listened to his radio station, he was saying, he said something like that really like stuck with me. He was like, if we keep on killing our todays, like, what would our tomorrows look like? Mm-hmm. So like you keep on killing like she, he was like how old was he 32 33 32 30 33 i think so imagine him 10 20, 20 years down years the road down. like imagine that impact mm-hmm. but the thing about it is that like he's behind the scenes with it is yeah so the thing about it is that that impact might be there but we still might not have appreciated it i i have not mourned for nipsey because I did not know him personally, but I feel like my heart has a crack in it. Yeah. Knowing the type of person he was, knowing how he loved Lauren London. Um, I remember when they broke up a couple years ago and I was like, oh man, he broke up. Even when she gained weight after having his son, you know, like she still was the love of his life. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know, how often do you find real ones in our generation? Because he is a part Hard, of our yeah. generation. Where are they? That's what, yeah, you don't, it's hard, it's, it's rare that you find a man that's like standing up for his family because like a lot of these guys, they just think that, you know, so many options available, like they don't have to settle. Like, you it's know not what I mean? even, you know what? I don't even think it's there. And I'm sorry to cut you off, but I really feel like it starts with us, us women, having these babies. You know, I'm constantly telling you, I sent you pictures earlier from the girl that I knew when I lived in New York and her photos when she was pregnant. Oh, I didn't know that you knew her. Yeah, I know her personally. Like, I know her personally. Her son looks like her boyfriend. 
-hmm. And like the biggest issue I have is that like I see so many women baby and their sons teach your son how to be a man teach your son not to be disrespectful towards other women um getting on facebook um maybe like a week ago this girl i know her son is 14 and she walks in his room and he's on facetime with this little girl from his school all of a sudden the girl is all types of hoes and tatianas because her son is on facetime with him you're teaching your son to be disrespectful because you're disrespecting this little girl mm -hmm. and i think the first thing you said was a lot of times like and it's not all the time but you know like a lot of times the little boys are like well you know come on and you know like don't listen to everybody else like basically they, they, I'm not going to say they peer pressure grows into doing things, but you know, they're Pre definitely persuade, subject. Yeah. Right. They're persuasive. So, you know, it's just like, it starts with us. Yeah. Teaching. First of all, you have to realize when you, boy or girl, you have to realize that you're raising someone's friend, husband, wife, uncle, like brother, baby father, baby like, mom, sister, like all yeah. that stuff. So you have to realize what you're raising and you know, like you're you a lot of females they like, it's nothing but a no good bunch of no good niggas out here. Like but then like you said, they 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 train their sons to be that way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like so you're just creating You're perpetuating like, the stereotype. Yeah, like you're just overpopulating this the cesspool of like no good men. Right. Like, you know what I mean? So right. it, it's just crazy. But like for me, like I know like I'm on top of my son. Like you, you gonna be a gentleman. You hold that door open. You mm -hmm. make sure you use your manners, and you know you be considerate of other people. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you be respectful, and you do things in the house. Like so, right. it's not just like. Right. And a lot of times too, like mothers, some sometimes they limit the boys to not cooking or doing any yeah. like household yeah. chores like what boys jobs they, are more than just putting out the fucking trash and then like, they, they pile it all on the girls and they mm -hmm. can't realize they, it's, it's so crazy because so many women push the daughters away and then coddle the sons and keep the, the son on the nipple yeah and they, and they're the ones fucking remodel in the fucking basement <laughs> like <laughs> you know what I mean like they're making babies in the basement like yeah. you know what I mean like and, and not yeah. leaving yeah ever. and then you but you push your daughter out right but then in the end when you're sick you need your daughter right like, you know what i mean like, right so and then another thing is that you know like for some odd reason like a lot of daughters they stay in that situation and i i can say that i did it for a long time because we're always taught well that's your mom and you just have to accept how she treats you mm -hmm. and like you don't yeah if you don't if you're if mom or not if they don't respect mother father if they don't respect you right like, Right, and, and they mistreat you, then right. why you just because you're my parent? Right. Why do I have to put on? Especially I'm an adult, and I have the right, and I can walk away. And it, not even just that. If I'm an adult and I have my own family, I don't have to put up with your abuse. Yeah. At all, especially you know if I can see a difference in the relationships between you know me and you, and you and my brother, or you and my brothers, or you know any male in the family. Like it's just it's so fucking insane and. We got to start doing better. We got to start raising more... Better examples. Yeah, I was going to say more Nipsey hustles. Yeah, and, and and not more features. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. You know what I mean? Yo, like, like we... You want, you we want need some here? Russell Williams. Like We do need some Russell Williams. And if, do you remember when, um, like, uh, he did an interview? Who? So I'm I'm jumping back to the past. So let me let me bring it to the future. Uh, future did an interview not too long ago and said that he thought it was disrespectful that Sierra never introduced Russell to him prior to like really getting serious with him. But then you know the internet does never never ever forgets anything. They like the once you put it out there, it's, it's there forever. Space. So they brought up an interview from when Sierra first started dating Russell and she was like, you know, I was trying to int introduce my baby father to him because he's going to be around our son and he keeps declining and I'm not even sure why. And it's like, this is a grown ass fuck nigga and y'all support him by supporting his music and- I'm, I'm sorry, but Future did come with some bangers, like- He come with some bangers, said, but I like- did, like, yo, And some Gucci lip flops. Yeah, but that's <laughs> like- I know, but I'm, I mean, I don't know. I can't bullshit. say- I can't say how he is with his you know kids like but from what they were saying like um russell williams someone um what was it like an interview or some shit and they were like talking to him about sierra or something like that and he was like 
I guess Sierra. You talking about the, the child support? Yeah, I guess she's yeah, like struggling so, with. Right, she's he's not paying his child support, and Russell was just like, you know what? I don't want you stress over coins. I got the bank. Right for my wife and my son. Like Hell I know yeah. that's right, Russell. Hell <laughs> yeah, and you know, Future was so quick to call him corny. You're perpetuating a stereotype once again. Um, like this is a good role model for your son. For your son, at. right? Yeah. Exactly. And I think the the fucked up shit about it is that like with a lot of these male celebrities. You know, like, they support toxic relationships. Mm -hmm. So, like, when Cardi B and and Offset, hit, like, when their shit hit the fan, you have all these niggas that got a long history of cheating. Talking about babies. taking back. Like, right, exactly. And, you know, like, it's just like, all y'all fuck niggas, like, I get that y'all have money, but y'all don't have a right to treat women like that. Yeah. Future is constantly jumping back and forth between all these different women. And then, you know, that whole situation, the internet thought it was so funny when he told that girl, I'm good, love, and joy. Mm -hmm. But when she was actually trying to get somewhere in her career and she thought that she had a chance to work with somebody real, he's just like, nah, I just wanted to fuck. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know, like, that shit... It, it grinds me to fuck yeah, up. Yeah, but you also have to blame the, you, you know, all fault isn't just due to the men. Like, it's the females, too, that allow, put themselves in that situation. Like, yo, all right, I'm going to go, I'm going to like all their shit, comment on everything, constantly being in the DMs, just She met him in the studio. No, I'm not just, I'm not saying her. I'm just saying that for him to think that way, it's females out here that's doing that. Like, say, oh, Instagram hoes? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so it's... That's another thing. Yeah. So you gotta blame They feel like they can get parties. whatever they want out of whoever they want because a lot of these girls, well, a lot of these girls, they do throw themselves at them because the only thing they want is a bag, mm -hmm. securing a bag. And like, I don't understand why it's okay for us to perpetuate, you know, these stereotypes and shit like that. We need more Russells in yes. the world. More Russells. Yes. Did you see that he gave like his um, lineman like 20K? Wait, before you talk about what he giving up, let's talk about how much he made first. Right. How much would the uh, contract for? 140 mil. Four year contract? 140 but mil. But yo, then he was like, to all my linemen, yeah. you, you risk yourself mentally, physically, every yeah. game day for me. I'm going to give each one of you guys 20K in Amazon, 12K mm -hmm. in Amazon stocks. All I'm saying is... Amazon is that shit, though. Taking over so, to... Yo. I know a professional football player. And so I was going to ask him, what do I have to do to become a lineman for the Seahawks? <laughs> 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 yo, you're retarded. Nah, like, that's dope. That That's a man that look out for the people, like, for his people around him. And that's a... That's, and like, this is the things that you hear about. So imagine what he's... Doing right. that we don't know about. Right, and that, that's another thing is that, you know, like, these these outstanding men, they really, like, hold the fort down behind the scenes. And I think that's the, the thing that I appreciate about them the most is that, like, they don't need approval from the rest of the world. Yeah, and I can re really appreciate these guys just doing positive things and, and not, you're not, you're hearing about some of the positive things and you're not hearing about scandals like fucking uh wendy williams like fucking no good husband oh, allegedly trying to poison her but even the baby yeah yo i'm so glad she got a divorce like i'm it's, so yo the thing about it is that like not to say that i want to promote divorces like but at, you can't it's it's, it's hard a to toxic situation no yeah. you're not promoting divorces you're promoting the fact that she walked away from a toxic situation first of all wasn't he like an executive producer for her show or some shit like that yeah what, was, was he her manager too or something fire yeah. him for everything you're getting a bag off of all the hard work that you don't have to do mm -hmm. and the only thing you got to do is love and respect her and appreciate her her and stand by her side and you couldn't even do that but you was fucking around with shorty for like 10 years yeah. for 10 years and got her pregnant and then she got walking her pregnant. around with all, what was that like a lambo lambo she was driving to have all types of designer sweatsuits on and Who, bags shorty? In it. yeah the baby mom oh i ain't know that sure. i ain't know that i just know that Charlemagne gave him the donkey of the day <laughs> i know he gave eric holder the donkey of the day these niggas rightfully fucking deserve it yeah they like that's crazy how you like she was with him forever. Mm -hmm. What's she going to tell her son? I know he's seen it all over the internet. How old is their son? Mm, maybe like nine or ten or some shit like that. 
Yeah, that's that's just crazy. They ain't talking about he allegedly like tried to poison her. Yeah, someone called the police from her production him. team. Yeah. And then they said that when he was hesitant about opening the door up, and that when they finally let him in, he would not let the cops get close to her. And they said that she was covered with a blanket from neck all the way down. Mm. And she was like, oh, I'm just getting over this cold and this, that, and third. First of all, if you was trying to poison her, you dumb as shit because they always going to find out. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to understand that we live in an age of modern everything. It's not like back in the day with those black widows. Like, they could poison yeah, nah, their fucking nah, nah, nah. husbands. Like, right, multiple even, husbands. Even then, like, some of them still got caught. But now, you definitely going to sit in jail. Mm-hmm. Point blank, period. Like, you dumb as shit. Your, your son would have to go live with her family, probably. You'd be sitting in jail, and she would be gone. What the fuck are you trying to, like, what point is there to prove? Yeah, just just because you fucked up and you just can't. Is it jealousy? No, it's just, it's just dumb shit. You fucked up and maybe he was like, I don't want to be in this relationship anymore, but this is my bag. Like, you know that's what I mean? Like, that's because he was probably the beneficiary of her payout. Mm-hmm. That's, that's insane. That's the scene. And all the hard work she do, you know, she probably was, like, trying her best to, to you know, keep her shit together. She's living in a sober house. Mm-hmm. Because she was, like, she was on bad drugs back in the day. And now she's, like, if uh, I relapse. It's like alcohol right now. Mm-hmm. She's been getting drunk. Probably. Because it was cocaine before. She even mm-hmm. spoke Yeah, she about talked it. about yeah. it multiple times. Multiple times. And, you know, like, that... It's so horrible. People don't understand, like, how serious mental health is. We just seen Britney Spears come out the hospital. Yeah. And everybody think that shit is so funny, and it's not funny. Just because they're rich and they have all the money that you could possibly never think of don't mean that they're content and happy with life. And that's the one thing that we always seem to forget. You know me. You've known me for years now. And, you know, you see that I live the life that I want to live. You see that, you know, my home is decorated like fucking like cotton candy world. (laughs) <laughs> you know, you see me crawl myself from the depths of despair, but you also seen behind closed doors how I was breaking down, mm-hmm. how I felt like I had nobody, how I felt like I had yeah, nothing. Yeah, so on the outside, like right? Every, and when you everything go out, glitters, not gold. Right. When when I would go out, you know, I would be all smiles and I'd be jokey jokey, and then I would come home by myself, and it would be like this dark cloud would descend upon me. Mm-hmm. So like, people need to understand that like this shit is real. Yeah. This like everything we go through, and it's not. It's funny real. like even like um michelle from destiny's child like when yeah. she came out talking about how depressed she was like you know suffering from depression i felt bad because those memes for years yes especially when she felt like ever. yeah i was like yo i feel so bad for laughing mm-hmm. at this girl and thinking it was funny but it's she, like a serious had, issue yeah she's bearing the weight of the world and people don't understand it yeah people don't get it and then i think another thing that plays into it is um, the internet because it's so easy for people to throw stones and then hide their hands mm-hmm. and you know create create all these fake pages and yeah and did I tell you oh, I didn't tell you Nikki went through that no yeah she just told me the other day that she was just like somebody came on my page and they was trolling me wow and I was just like wow she had a nervous breakdown um, right after we did the second photo shoot and she had to remind herself that you know her bravery is the reason why we're doing it and she was just like it was really fucked up because somebody like never seen the page before no nothing what this re- just recently a couple days ago wow came to her page and you know was talking about her weight and everything mm. and you know I don't like that I don't like that I have heard a couple comments from a couple people and I shut that shit down automatically Mm -hmm. automatically like if I was to hear somebody talk about my body and the things that I don't like about me I would cry on cue Mm -hmm. like on the spot because like that's my weak part I'm sensitive and like this girl is making it okay for other women to feel good in their bodies no matter if they're her size or larger. Yeah. Why in a million years would you ever judge her for that? Yeah. But people do it. People do it. The internet is the easiest way to get to somebody. Mm-hmm. So, you Because know. everyone is touchable on the internet. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Speaking of fucking t- touchable. So, do you believe that about Remy Ma? Oh. Oh, I see how you that. Punching that girl in the eye. Punching that girl in the eye. Um... Let me think. I'm not sure 
if I believe it. There's something sketchy about that girl's story. Mm-hmm. So she's basically like, well, Remy punched me in the eye because I saved her daughter's life. Ma, that doesn't even make sense. That doesn't. It, it's all. so many holes in that story. Like, it just like, huh? Right. So she just came up to you and said, why you saved my daughter's life, bitch? Pop. Boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, I don't I know. That. I know. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's just like. Yeah, no. No, I What? Don't. Like, what do you mean? She like, could you imagine Remy just like, because she from the Bronx. So she'd be like, really? That ass though? That ass? Oh, here you, you go know? with your fake ass. Uh. <laughs> she walked up with a pair of Tim's on and a, and a uh, Yankee hat, a Yankee fitted. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. She obviously got punched in the eye. Yeah. She got oh, oh yeah, it's obvious. But I don't understand how it happened or who actually did it. How we know that Remy daughter didn't fuck her up. Mm-hmm. We don't know. You don't know. You go with this. You go with Rem daughter to Miami, and the next thing you know, you tell Remy that you saved her daughter life, and you now bloop bloop. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just sitting said, back. Bah, bah. Right. <laughs> it's like the whole Jesse Smollett thing. Like you uh-huh. actually have to sit back and see what happens next to understand like. What but is actually going on? See, this is one of those stories that I think is just going vanish. Like, it's just going to be like, here today, gone tomorrow. You know like, why? Because it's bullshit. No, because nobody gives a fuck about Britney Taylor. She, but Wasn't she on Love & Hip Hop? She was on Love & Hip Hop and nobody gave a fuck out. about her. So right. was she going to drop, watch she drop a mixtape soon? Like, that's the whole thing right there. She's going to drop a mixtape. Like. Now, what I can say is that I was on my girlfriend's page the other day and she reposted Brittany Taylor, I want to say probably about like a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Some music. Two. She she reposted Brit, Brittany Taylor. This was a while ago. It wasn't even months ago. This is a long time ago. She, because you know sometimes how you gotta go through um, your bullshit and be like, hmm, I never seen this before. So that's what I was doing. I was on my girlfriend page. And yeah, she had posted, um, she had posted Brittany doing a freestyle. And I was just like, hmm. Not bad. And that's what she said. She was all like, Britney Taylor got bars. And I was like, wow. Wow. What? What? Nah, you I never confused. heard her. You never heard her? Mm-mm. Oh, I don't think I ever told you um, my girlfriend's Instagram. You can go see the video yourself. Tiana Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> You wait, wait. So you said it was so. Now this is not. This isn't right. So I was um, on Instagram and I showed my sister the, the pictures of um, Tiana Taylor. You know she dressed just like she says she could. She wears her husband clothes sometimes. Mm-hmm. I was showing my sister the picture. I was like, yo, she look like a straight dude. Or no, what did I say? That's she's so gay. That's something I said, right? Uh-huh. And then you sent me the pictures like, yo, she is sexy as hell. I was like, of course. <laughs> You think that, and then you're gonna say, I want these sweatpants. What are they called? <laughs> I was like, uh, drop crotch, crotch. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, she is sexy. Oh my god, I skied a little bit when I seen them pictures. Oh my god, is it what's all right? We cut, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to bleep that out? Yes, <laughs> so, oh, skeet, skeet, goddamn. <laughs> she is sexy as all fucking hell. Oh my god. Did you see it when she did her concert and she gave the, the thick Jew on the lap dance and she was rubbing on her butt and every... Just like, oh, I wish that was that me. That was me. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was me. That deep ass voice. Come here, girl. Okay. Okay. You were so right there. Hell yeah. Yo. Yeah. I'm That's... trying to think. I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, you look real confused. You were sound like your girlfriend. And I was like, what? Oh, now she's like, like, what? Yeah, she did repost her. It was a while ago. That was like my sister telling me that I lied too effortlessly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never. Yeah, you lied. You, it comes too natural for you. Like, can't Not all the time. Answer. Sometimes you can tell. You'd be like, Marquita, did you do what you said you were going to do? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. Like, I know you fucking lying. I'd be like, oh. Or when you smoking that um, vape thing. When? When I was at work? No, when, like if I'm on a phone with you and I hear it sound no, like No, because you sound like you hit, you smoke a crack pipe. <laughs> <laughs> like G Money or New Jack City. First of all. Marquis, you smoking that damn glass dick. Sorry. <laughs> 
What? No, I'm done for this episode. You just disrespecting <laughs> me to the, like the million power. You be like, no. Um, a truck just went by me. Okay. <laughs> First and foremost, don't ever disrespect me like that ever again in your life. And I'm dead serious. <laughs> dead the fuck serious. Second of all. Oh, she's serious. Second of all, you know people that second have a history of smoking crack. Uh-huh. So I suggest you not make jokes about it. And third of all, when I told you that I wasn't smoking my vape, I really wasn't. The last three times you asked me when I was in my car, I was like, I'm really not. So how salty are you right now? Damn, I wish I could just text you that salt gift where fucking what's the name is pouring out the whole thing of salt just all over you, all over you. Don't do it, Nico. Don't do it. Shut up. (laughs) Empty way. Now that we're moving on. Speaking of salty, so there's a bench warrant for Tierra Marie's arrest. For the, the, um. Not paying 50. Yeah, why won't he just leave her alone? But yo, that's fun. It is funny how they're going back and forth though. Did she she she's been getting him. Yeah, did she you see that she, she said this is my new album cover? Yo. <laughs> yo. Then um she was all like, she was like, I'm not gonna drop it until you send me that feature for this show. <laughs> that was that was funny as fuck. Um, I'm trying to think. I just I feel like Personally, how I feel about the situation. Everybody's like, well, she needs to just pay him the money. She needs to just she pay like, him the money. She's like, I don't money. got it. First I don't of got the all, this, the this is the same nigga that filed bankruptcy so he didn't have to pay Rick Ross' baby mom. Mm-hmm. The same nigga. So, like, y'all, like, uh, he's yeah. just so, he too old for the bullshit. He is. He's always just, like, saying some shit. Right. He's always coming at somebody's neck. Like, sometimes it... When he be talking about Floyd Mayweather can't read, it do be funny. <laughs> That's not nice, though. It's not nice. It, it do be funny, though. But no, yeah, yeah. it's not nice. It's not at all. And, like, just sitting back and looking at his antics on the internet, I just, like... It's so childish. Right. You used to date Vivica Fox, and when you get chances, you take jabs at her. Yeah. And she don't even do that to you. Mm-hmm. Like, she's a grown-ass woman, and so are you. She don't have time for that. She got her own little TV show. Talk show She got her own business. That bitch been fucking selling weaves to the masses for years now. She, um, her face changed. It did. A lot of their faces changed. A lot of them. I'm still gonna get my plastic surgery. I want some lips. <laughs> Don't be walking around here looking like a fucking Kardashian. Those lips. Uh, Chloe. Chloe. Looking like Chloe and shit. First of all, I know you said Masika don't have nothing done to her lips, but I she, never said that. I said that I don't. Saying, I don't mind. Her no, that you. All right, like all right, if you go. I to, think that Masika's gorgeous. She fucked up her lips. I don't. I, that doesn't bother. Like it just. I don't know. I don't pay attention to that. It doesn't bother me. How can you not pay attention when you look at someone? First thing you know is their eye, face, eyes, lips. You look at people's lips when you talk to them. I don't. I just look in the eyes. If people have bad teeth, I like in. <laughs> My eyes always like zoom into their teeth, and I'm like, "Oh shit, wait, look at them in the eyes." Like, <laughs> no, I I literally pay attention to people's eyes. Oh. Yeah, I'm just I'm just that type of person. Like, what well, that's what I said. Eyes, mouth. Um, bitch, this whole. All right, so let me just say, I am happy that Jordan is getting a bag. Mm-hmm. Because we talk about Khloe Kardashian, she Kardashian to Kardashian. Yeah. And like, people just like, oh, Jordan wrong. Don't get me wrong. She was wrong. The girl said that she only kissed him. She didn't do anything sexual with him, that she only kissed him. I didn't even actually watch the interview or read up on it after that. Like, I was just like done with it. I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, That's you what put she yourself said in that happened. situation. Right, she put herself in that situation. But look, listen, the reason why I believe her is because I put myself in that situation in the past. Mm-hmm. But my last relationship, I put myself in a situation. But where, yeah, was you it know, someone like. Huh? It wasn't your close friend like that. That's no, like not family. At all. Yeah, that's yeah, not different. At all. Like no, that's just like wait. She was pretty much out of line for putting herself in that position. But they all was over. It, it wasn't just her. It was a whole bunch of. So this is the thing. But I understand. Is, I understand. But you know when a nigga is listen. With you. But listen to what I'm saying, right? What she said happened was is that everybody went to his house to party. He didn't kiss her until when she left. He walked her to the door. And that's what happened. That's what happened. It didn't necessarily mean he was flirting with her the whole night. I don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. All we know is that she said that at the end of the night when he walked up to the door, what kind of that's what happened. Was it a deep tongue or was it a pet? Um, I don't know. But at the end of the day, 
Chloe, he's been telling you for the longest time that he don't want to be with you. He has. He's he's been his actions. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll his fucking out. actions. First of all, that man has a type, and Chloe is not his fucking type. We see all these different girls, and they all fit in that same that same range. Jordan's in that range too. Chloe is not. Yeah, she's. Chloe looks like a fucking builder bear now. Yeah, I don't know. She did that. She fucked up her butt. She fucked up her butt, her face. She like, don't even look like the same thing. Like, you hold those before and afters. It's like it's what crazy. I ordered and what I got. Yes. <laughs> yeah, when it's all fucked up. Yeah. It like, and it, it's not that I'm sitting here trying to judge her. It's just that I'm being real. She just went to the extreme. Like, if she would have stopped at a certain point, she would have been. She was great. chilling like two years ago. Yeah, she was, when she, she was started losing perfect. all the weight, I was like, yo, Chloe looked beautiful. And then as she hell. got way too skinny and her ass was way too big. And yeah. then she can't minimize that. Sometimes they can dissolve it, but I, I highly doubt that she got implants where they can take the implants out. And she probably had the fat transfer. Like they got but nothing. No. Well, she ain't really had that much. To no. Her. She no. She had. She was. She was bigger before. Yeah. That's not a fat transfer because with a fat transfer because it's your fat, you can actually lose it. Like it, you can break it down the way you. Yeah, her shit like, just sit. Like, no, it's just sitting there. No fucking legs. No calves. No thighs. No nothing. Just a whole bunch of nasty rock hard ass. And is I'm it just, hard? Like, no, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Have to it's go. just nasty. You want to oh, go to strip club? No. Go ahead. go ahead and tell a story. Go ahead. I know you got you got hype real quick. I know because I just remember I was like, is it um, hard? But no. So my birthday night, I told you what happened. Like we mm-hmm. came outside and the fucking car was towed, mm-hmm. so we had to catch an Uber home. And we were talking. I don't know what we were talking about. It was me and both my sisters and um, my cousin. We were in the car. And the Uber driver was this girl. I don't know how we got on the subject, but she started talking about um, her ass was fake. Mm-hmm. Her ass and her titties. We was like, what? She was like, yeah, it looked real. It feel real and everything. She was like, I let y'all feel it. That's it. So females. More yeah, females. Females. So we completely, because that was like the beginning. We went from South Street all the way up to Cotman and the Boulevard. So mm-hmm. we, we talking shit, mad that the car got told and all this other stuff. So we get to the house. We forgot about it. Like, we're ready to, we got out the car, about to go in the house all drunk. And she hops out, her driver, uh, her driver doing, she was like, y'all want to feel it? Look, see, feel it. It feel real. She was a hood rat, wasn't she? She was. <laughs> but that joint did feel real. It was like soft. Like, I was like, okay, I wonder. But some of them look hard. Like, her joint looked like legit, like real. You talking about like Nicki Minaj's? Yeah, or a Tiny. Oh, God. Tiny from Nikki, escape. she getting crazy with the plastic I surgery. Stopped, I actually stopped following her, like, and I don't see too much of her because, like, she went from like after she got killed by Cardi, like now she's like this whole sex symbol. Like, it's just, it's just like, where's the music? Like, I know she dropped the album after that, but it was just like, all right, like you're a rapper, <laughs> like yeah. you're like you look like you're modeling for playboy like yeah. like what's going on like i thought you were an artist like yeah i mean don't get me wrong like she out here she got a new boo and everything and she seems to be happy with him and i'm i'm happy about that but girl don't let go of who you are yeah like because i'm not content with my body i do want to get a couple things done but i don't want to take it to the extreme like but that's see that's the thing like some people start and it's just like it's, it's like drugs yeah just, they got to keep going back and keep going back because they're like one oh, of them yeah I, ooh, let me just tweak this right here like no i know i know what i want and you know like the goal for me is not to be skinny i never ever wanted yeah, to be if skinny. you're not skinny your head would be big as shit. shut the fuck up <laughs> you have a big ass head anyway <laughs> The goal was to never bobble be head and shit. Like, yo, my when kid, I was, your head got big as shit. When I was at my smallest, which <laughs> it wasn't even that much way to go, which is the craziest part about it. But when I was at my smallest, I looked good and I felt good and I wasn't skinny and I was happy. I know to some people in the world, I still would have been considered fat, but you know, I went from being 325 pounds down to like 185, 180. That's a lot. It is, but when I was 180, like I looked so good. And I think it's because like a lot of my weight- Was your head big? No, motherfucker. (laughs) A lot of my weight- Let me see some pictures, I tell you. Oh, you want to see some pictures? All right, come on now. Oh, all right. <laughs> a lot of my weight is carried in my hips. So, you know, it was like that classic Coke bottle shape. And I'm like, Ooh. But you can see it. In the lingerie pictures, you can definitely see my shape and everything and, and where everything is placed at. And a lot of people are like, you don't 
you don't seem like you know you're that big. And I just be like suck you from the back. <laughs> I it's hate when people so say unlady, that. like what you just said. Am I a lady? No. I never try to be, do I? Right oh Tori. Oh hard. Anyway. Um do you have any like new news or anything you got going on? I know you dropped some windbreakers. Um, I'm still waiting on my so camouflage kimono before you try to over talk me. No, so we just dropped that on the website, the the uh, army green camouflage kimonos and the denim kimonos and the denim hoppies mm -hmm. and the windbreakers. So what am I but getting mine? The high ticket, yo, these listen. That kimono kimono alone. You get a 10% uh, discount, right? It's $18.50. First of all. First of all, thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Couple of jokes. Oh, you are so shady. Episode 22. I will you definitely, can find us on. I will definitely remember that shit. <laughs> oh, I remember that shit. When I get this bag and we still, yo, what? And I build my empire to the max. I'm yeah, remember you could buy that it. shit. You could buy one. You could buy one, boo. Whatever. Show it. Anyway. Show day. Anyway, you want to do the outro? Um, so, <laughs> what? Girl. This is, so, epi what is this? Where we at? Episode 22? Mm -hmm, 22. 22, yeah. Deuce, deuce. Um, it's been so long, I forgot how to wrap up the, the show. It's like, no, I'm just playing. All right, listen, guys. You can find us on Instagram, a couple joins podcast. Uh, my personal page is Itchy by Miko, and this girl over here is Mixed Butterfly. Who the fuck is this girl over here? <laughs> this girl over here is Mixed Butterfly. You are so um, disrespectful. The link to this episode can be found in the bio, um, or you can, you know, check us out on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, um, what else? Spreaker, Spreaker SoundCloud. SoundCloud, all the platforms, pretty much. You know, just type in a couple joints podcast, mm -hmm. and um. It was fun catching up. We're about to go to Miami. Thank you, us. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, we should record down there. Ooh. I thought ooh, we were. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we are. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. All right, guys, we'll catch you next week. Um, Next week, right? Yeah, ain't it supposed to be a weekly thing? You, you dipped off. That's because I'm trying to build an empire. Mm. All right, guys, bye. <laughs>